Hi, my name is Jackie Lee Price and welcome to Shadowbox. Hi and welcome to Jeff O'Foley. How you doing, Jeff? I'm all right. How you doing, Jack? I'm good. I'm very good. I cannot complain you. I'm all right. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you as well. Um, <laughs> but how's the family in that? Yeah, everyone's well. Obviously, I haven't, no one's um, got the virus, so that's a good thing. Just trying to keep everyone self-isolating and just get through this phase. I know this is three weeks now. I think they're going to do another week, so hopefully we can put this behind us. Well, actually, in the full, we're going into the fourth week, so um, I, it, it's kind of getting... One week is just draining into another, but as another, long as everybody's yeah. well. And you've been working, have you not? Yeah, I'm still working, you know. I'm, I'm a key worker, so I still work. Monday and how's it been? How's it been? Yeah. It's been all right because, um, obviously, less trains are running because of, you know, because of the virus. So we get to, basically, we go early and then we leave at a reasonable time. But it's less noisy, less traffic, you know. But you can see it's affected the whole, the whole country big time. It's helped me with the driving because I have to drive far to work. It takes me an hour, but now it takes me about 40 minutes and there's no traffic. You know. Yeah. So people have been finding ingenious ways to keep themselves busy, motivated and positive. Apart from work, what else have you been doing to sort of keep your spirits up? Um, obviously the sun's been coming out, so I've taken, I've been jogging. So but I can only jog on grass, so I go to the park and I can't go out. I have to go at a time where there's not a lot of people there. So that's just been doing more press-ups as well. Press-up challenge, me and Sharif, Sam and Musa, we're trying to do 100 press-ups straight. But proper press up, military press up. So I got to 74 the other day. So I'm just waiting on him to come back with his video and just it's just just friends, family, just keeping each other going, you know. Yeah. Have you noticed that um people are sort of getting less selfish at this time and sort of reaching out? Have you noticed a change in people? Definitely, like even myself, like just helping out your fellow neighbor, just uh neighbor you see all the time, just go help them out, go shopping. They, they might not have a car. They don't need you every day, but at these times, if you've got a vehicle or someone doesn't, everyone just talking to each other more and you, you just appreciate the small things, you know, the things we take for granted. Absolutely. I think that that's the biggest thing that people are learning. With yeah, even for me. Even for me. And what about in terms of how, mentally how you're dealing with it? Because I know some people, they don't fare very well um, being on their own and being isolated, has, has that sort of affected you at all? That hasn't really affected me because obviously I box, so I think any boxer, they're going to be used to the, to the isolation. And I still go to work, so I, I get that time to go out. So I'm not like everybody just, just in the house all day. And I think sometimes it's good. For me, it's good because I've had a rest. You know, the, last, the end of last year, I had a busy... You know, I'd fight after fight. So yeah. for me, it's just resting my mind. I'm still training my body, but I'm just doing more flexibility work. I'm just healing up and I'm ready to go. Um, let's talk about your last fight. Part of the golden yeah. contract, the semi-finals yeah. Um, yeah. against Haro Davies. Yeah. yeah. Just give me a little insight as, um, you know, the, the, that fight night. Um, everything was well. I went in there well trained, well prepared. Um, we had a beautiful game plan. I went in there. First round was cool. Second round was cool. Third round, I I don't like to be honest. I don't even know where the shot came from. Like I got hit with a shot like just it was just on my near my near my ear, and I think yeah. that's where it's like an equilibrium shot because I don't even all I remember was that I was on the floor. So as I'm getting up from the third from the from the end of the third round, I'm getting the count. I've sat there and literally my feet are not with me. Yeah. I can't even hear what they're doing, stressing or nothing because the first time I've gone down like that, so I'm just like, oh, what's going on? So even me watching, I can't even remember the fourth round, to be honest, but me watching it back, that fourth round, I was just literally just fighting off just instinct, really. Instinct, yeah. Yeah, but then when I got through the fourth round, then I was back again. So obviously Bev started giving me the instruction. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I've got my senses back with me. I'm ready to go. So I went in the fifth round. And like, even the start of the fifth round, I, I got hit with a big shot again, like, I think near my ear again, which you saw my legs a bit. My legs nearly gave way, but I managed to hold it through. 
I managed to suck that fifth, um, suck it up through the fifth round, give a few shots of, of mine. I think I might have went in too much in the fifth at the end. So I had the momentum. So coming into the sixth round, I was ready. But it's just, I think it was experience on my behalf because I got hit with a big shot. The first shot wasn't the biggest shot. It looks like the first shot was the biggest shot, shot because it looks like I stumbled back. But I didn't even stumble because I was in a southpaw stance. Yeah. When he hit me with that big shot, automatically, because I'm a, a orthodox, yes. I, I automatically switched into orthodox. But it looked like I, like, this, it, it was a hard shot, I'm not going to lie, but it just made it, me switching back stance, it made it look worse. Yeah. The second shot he hit me with, that was the biggest shot. Actually, but you were square on. You were square on. I was on. square on. And if yeah. you watch the second shot, the second shot catches me flush on the chin. And yes. to be honest, I didn't really feel the shot. But I know that was a big shot when I watched it back. But if you watch the tape, I do put my hands up, but I took I took three punches in a row. So at the night, I was I was a bit I was a bit up um upset with the ref. I just felt like where I come from, you just, you just take shots and you like you go for it. But obviously it's a boxing game, they gotta look after the referee's job to look after me. So Watching it back, he, he did what he had to do. But yeah. me, I just learned a lesson where even I learned from my opponent on a horror, which I take my hat off to him because when I got him at the end of the fifth, he moved, he got out there. He, you know what I'm trying to say? He didn't give the referee the, the um, chance to do that. Whereas yes. I'm standing there like it's a street fight and it's not a street fight. And Bevers has told me, like, since we started training, like, he's told me over and over again, like, holding, like, it's, and just watching it back, if I just moved off, like, it's just, it's painful to watch, but it was, it, was, it was a good experience for me. Very good experience. First time I've been dropped, um, I got knocked out. So, like, it's, it's, I've, 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 I learned a lot that night. I'm glad you were uh, seeing it like that. Firstly, let's talk about, um, you're obviously not as experienced as those guys. So you're kind of like, although you're learning in camp, you're still learning within a fight situation as well. So, like you say, sometimes it's difficult to kind of put all those pieces together. Not trying to take yeah. anything away from O'Hara. But let's just mm. talk about that fifth round. Beautiful yeah. round for you. Really yeah. strong. It, you, it was almost like you, you, smelt blood, you smelt blood. And you were yeah, trying to sort of stop, that, stop him. Yeah, to be honest, um, the, first, the third round, me, that shot that he hit me with, I don't know. Obviously, he timed me. And in the third round, I got... Like a bit complacent and comfortable. If you watch the last 10 seconds, I put my hands down and I'm moving around because I just felt like, yeah, man, I've like the plan's working. I got I, like, I got him where I want. And then he obviously timed me and threw that shot where he probably knew that my guard wasn't going to be up. And it hit me just, I, I, it hit, I was just, it was, it was, you know what I'm saying? It was just meant yeah. to be. It's like, and that third round when I went down, I know that boosted him up because he had hit me with shots the first two rounds where. You know, like I took, I took some heavy shots in those first two rounds. You did. But in the yeah. third round, when I was taking them shots, I was like, "Yeah, like this, like, like this is my fight. I've, I've trained myself. I know, I can go through it." So that third shot, he just, he, I think he just thought, "Nah, this guy's chin, it's, it's not working on the chin." And when he hit me in that shot there, but like I said, it just helped me out. So when I'm training, I'm always like, I just know what to do. You know, I have to have that more zoom and Nelson hands up and just, I learned, I learned, I learned a lot in that fight. You know, I learned a lot. What was interesting is before the fight, he was saying that you were the w weakest link. I don't know if it was those exact words, but... Yeah. And then after the fight, he was saying, I'm not going to lie, I thought it was going to be easier to get out, uh, you know, get out of there. Um, you must take something from that, surely. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, obviously, I understand what he's talking about, because obviously I've, I've had the least amount of fights, so he was going on fights, saying I was the weakest link. But at the end of the day, I know I've, I've had fights like... Like, you know, so I knew the thing is he's he, he can hit hard. I'm not gonna lie, he's a hard hitter. Yeah. But that's what I knew he was banking on him hitting hard, but he can hit hard. He showed he can hit hard. But I just felt I was wet I, I, but like I said, it's it's boxing. I got a it's a part of the game is hit and not get hit. It's not yeah. be standing there and getting hit as much as you can and coming back. Yeah. Where I was on some Nigel Ben, like because when he hit me, I saw him coming, but I was just like, I'm still here, you know, but it's just yeah, it's like I said, it's more, it's more, I just got a, Bevis told me as well, like the holding, the manoeuvring, the, just, just like how he did in round five. Yes. As soon as he got hit, he moved, he held and he had to step back. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what got him through the round. So just watching it back, I just saw the experience he used on me was what, yeah, man, he, I, 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 I'm not going to take my hat off, I'll take my hat off to him. He, he's, a, he, he, he's a good fighter, man. He can hit hard, I'm not going to lie. And he was clever, very clever with his jab as well. 
it, very deceiving that jab because he's very. not that much taller than you, and yet yeah, his, like his arms, arms are long. Mm. They're Very really well. long, which I've never seen, never really registered before. So, yeah, I think uh, the other thing that I think that people found out about you, though, Jeff, was, number one, how much heart you've got. You've got a fantastic chin. And i tell you where I think that comes from. Not just because you do the training, you know, uh, you, you obviously do the, the boxing training, but your job as well. Ah, uh, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Like, because even when I'm going to work, I hadn't trained because I took a week off after the fight. Normally after a fight, I go straight back to training. But after that fight, I took a week off. And then I went back on the Monday. And as I was walking, I could feel my feet. It's like, I feel, you know what? Because I'm so used to it, it's yes. nothing. But taking that time off here and going back, I realised the, the, um, the work does does help me as well. But at the same time, what I need to understand, that what I've realised now, is because the work is also, even though it's not boxing training, Yes. It's a lot on my ligaments and my legs. Absolutely. So I need to, I need to learn how to like balance all the workout because I do that job, then I go straight to strength and conditioning, and I'm getting little niggles where yes. I'm understanding that I was taking stuff for. And as I'm getting older, I need to look after my body more. So I heard about the result of the fight before I actually had a chance to see it, and everybody was saying how much of a great account that you um, gave of yourself, yeah. how much heart. Um, you know, your chin, everything. And I think, I think that that was the most amazing thing, that you've gone into a fight where you came in at the quarterfinals. Was it the quarterfinals? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you gave such a great account of yourself. You must be proud of that. Yeah, you know, like, I'm not going to lie, I, I didn't go in there to take part. So I, I, appreciate, I appreciate everyone. And uh, I'm not going to lie, when I came out, everyone was... was like like you said, they were telling me I did well and they, they were really nice, but I didn't go in there for for the second place, you know, but a fair play to him, man. He, 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 he's clever and he, he hits hard and he, like fair play to him, man. I'm going to lie, man. He, he, he can fight, man. One of the things that I wanted to, to, to mention, actually, in terms of the fight night, so that screw shot you were throwing through the centre, you were having some <laughs> success with that. <laughs> but then there just wasn't you weren't following it up enough with um you know your your work rate wasn't high enough yeah do you know he like he he leans a lot to his left so what he was doing was with the jab like the, uh, he, there was no sting in the jab there was no like sting in the jab it was just yeah. like just to line you up for the right hand but the way he kept leaning I had to do more angles. That's why I didn't do wrong. But the thing is, he's, he's, he's a clever fighter, man. He's a, he's a lot cleverer than people actually think he is. Because yes. cause the way he leans, you have to step, like, to your right to get to him. But as you're stepping to your right, yes. if you step, like, it's like he looks at your foot and he'll throw his right hand. So it's yes. like he almost, you can almost walk into the right hand. Yes. So, and, and it's like, I can see, like, he had, yeah, it, it was, yeah. So that, that screw shot, I could get him, but then to go around, I'll have to either get out of the way of the right hand or slip under again. It's only when I started slipping double, like you see the part where I catch him round five, it's yes. a double slip. Yes. Throw the shot, slip, slip, then yes. throw the shot. Then it was working. It's, I think it's great, though, that you kind of go, ah, oh, you know what, I tried a thing. <laughs> and oh, and like, he was a little every, bit cleverer than me. <laughs> every time I watched it, like, it's, it's, it's especially the last round, like, because the first shot hits me, and even the stance thing, I was like, ah, oh, it's gonna change stance. I shouldn't like. It's all these little things that, like, you know, that it's it's just the tweaks. I just let's just I've got to get the dumb tweaks out, man. Because even when he threw that, when I was in the south pole stance, when he threw the right hand, I should have slipped. But obviously, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You're gonna yeah. say all of this now, you know? you know. So, do you think he would have had as much success had he not uh, had he stayed with his old trainer uh, uh, versus being with? Angelo Fernandez. Um, I don't know, but all I know, I, 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 I'm not too sure, but all I know was it was the little stuff on the inside. Even the shots you were catching me with, it was quick, sharp, boom, boom, like it was precise, you know, very precise. I mean, he kept creating a little bit of space with the elbow. Yeah, yeah. He was, he, he was, like, it was create very the space clever. and go as well. Very clever. It? And even when we came up close, the way he would like turn like you know he'll turn to the side and 
like, even to get the body, it was, I, I, I literally can only hit him in the body when, at a time when he froze and hit him in the body. He wouldn't let yes. me just work on the inside. It was like, like it was, yeah, man. Yeah, I think, my, yeah, he can fight, man. I learned a lot in that fight. And that's, that's the main thing. And so, you, I'm guessing you're still going to carry on. I mean, everyone is saying, you know, this, this kid has got it. You know, he can, he, you know, I think you've opened a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, we're going to look at weights. That's what we're going to look at, weights. Because, like, now, where I am, the amount of fights I've had 13 fights, I've boxed at different weights. And I'm just, we're definitely looking at weights. We're definitely going to come down. We're going to see what weight we're going to go to. But even looking at the featherweights, it's like, they were the same size as me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I've got to look at the game properly and come back properly, focus, fully fit, and do, and do it properly, you know? On fight night... Biggest night of your career, you know, what is it like in the dressing room? Is it, was there a different feel to normal or was it just business as usual? Um, to be honest, it was, it was just business as usual. Um, as I was in the change room, Carl was in there, you know, Carl's my seconds, Bevis was in there, Roy was in there. Um, the normal team was in there, Paolo was in there. We did everything that we normally do, even before that, because um, it was first up, it was ready from the, from the get-go. Yeah. Raps was on early, Carl was playing the tunes, I was in my vibe, I felt loose, I felt smooth, I felt I felt good, man. I knew I knew what, what, what time it was. I got in that ring, everything was perfect. The first round, um, I'm not gonna lie, I might have underestimated his power. The first round is is I felt that, yeah, um, um he can hit, you know. Obviously I know he can hit, but you know, when you're in there, I felt it okay. Second yeah. round, I was like, cool. So third round is where, and it's like, I start to get just too relaxed. And especially the last 10 seconds, because that, that, that last 10 seconds, if I just kept my gloves up or just, you know, I just started to relax a bit. Like, I just felt, you know, when everything's going to plan? Yes. It was just like, and then he just turned everything with that one punch. And I went down and I was just like, what? Like, where did that come from? I was like, who threw that hammer in there? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, where, like, where did it come from? Like, if you watch it, because as he throws it, I go to duck it, but he throws it further back. So as this part goes, it hits. Yes. Yeah, and it just as soon as it hit me, my my leg from my standing leg just went. So as I'm getting up, I'm like, I'm like, what? So the fourth round, I'm just literally like, nah, man. Like, like <laughs> my hands are down. Like that fourth round, I don't know. I was just, I was, I was just instinct, pure instinct. That fourth round. You were taking some risks though, as well, to try and close yeah. that gap down. Like that, I, after the third round, I like as I got up, you know, when you look into a fight, like, like I see in his eyes, he like he like I could see, because I've, 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 I'm a fighter like that. I know, you know, when somebody's going for the kill, I could see in his eyes. So yes. in that fourth round, I was, my hand just went down, and I, when he threw, I threw, and I was just trying to throw more than him. And I was just throwing and throwing and throwing. Were you surprised at the result between McKenna and Mamoon? Um, to be honest, on the night, I didn't get to watch the fight fully because I just fought and I had to get checked out by the doctor. So when I came out, I saw the last few rounds and I thought, yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah. But then I heard everyone booing. So I didn't get to see on the night. But the next day, no, not the next day, I think, whenever it came out on Sky, like, then I watched it properly. And to be honest with you, like, even my dad watched it. It was a close fight. Maybe it didn't look like that on the night. It was a close fight, but like you said, like I'm not a judge, so that fight could have went like we all know <laughs> Mamoon's not happy with it, but watching it, it was close because Mamoon was tagging him. Yeah, McKenna was throwing a few, he was like throwing shots back, but it looked like Mamoon was hitting more in my in my in my in my, in my opinion. Yeah. I've watched it and I was quite shocked at the result. Um <laughs> I think everybody was. Yeah, um, yeah, I was quite shocked at the result. And, you know, I can understand both sides of the coin. Like, obviously, McKenna's like, no, 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 why is everyone getting on like that? But I can also understand, Mamoon, that, you know, these are massive um, platforms and to sort of have yeah. that ripped away from you, um, obviously, is quite devastating. I guess I need to go back and look at it again. Um, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm, because I'm a, I'm a forward, um, I'm a forward, I'm a pressure fighter. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm like, that's how I know, because I, I see when it comes to boxing, everyone's got their own bias of how they box. So if somebody's a counter puncher, they're going to say McKenna. If somebody's a forward, 
fight, they're gonna say Mamoun because Mamoun was coming forward the whole night. So yeah, in my yeah. eyes, that's why I'll go. But I know I've got a bias towards forward type of fighters and somebody. You know what I'm saying? So it's just each to their own what they like. You know. And have you sort of learned anything about yourself, Jeff? Like during this lockdown period, when you've had moments to yourself, is there anything that you've you've kind of learned? To just chill out, chill out, relax, you know, and just, just, I think I'm too, I'm too, I'm too regiment, regiment. Like, I've got to do this. I've got to run at this time. I've got to just chill out, you know, enjoy your life as well, because life is just passing, um, um, flashing past you. Like, during this lockdown, because the gym's not open, I think I'm just seeing so much, just little things in life that I'm just missing out on because I'm focused solely on my career and my work and just sometimes just sit back and just just chill just chill man and just be in the moment you know because i missed i like i missed that a lot you know yeah missed that a lot obviously it's for a reason but you have to enjoy these little because these little moments is what make is what turn to a lifetime you know so i have to chill out more chill out yeah i think uh, quite a few people have come to that conclusion yeah. The other thing that I wanted to ask you about is, so have you seen this whole thing, uh, Billy Joe Saunders made a funny video? Um, oh yeah, I saw that. It was taken a certain way, he's been banned for I think six months, fined massively. What's your take on that? Do you think it was a bit of Jim banter gone wrong or do you think it's... Uh, um, I just think, um, obviously he is who he is, isn't it? at the end of the day, so, but obviously, because of the role he's in, and you know, he's, he's a professional athlete, and he's in a role, it's like, maybe he didn't realise, but it's happened to him before, so, it's just, even me, like, I'm not, I haven't got no world titles or nothing yet, but just, even me, there's more people take notice of everything you do, so, it's just, maybe we just, with his people in the gym, and he just, he just, just that little split second, he forgot, it cost him, so, I just think, yeah, I don't, obviously, to me personally, I don't want to offend anybody, but I don't think he was being serious. I think, I don't know. I don't know, in that, to be honest, but at the end of the day, when you're in the limelight, you just everyone's watching you, you know, and everyone's watching for you for when you fall, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So final, O'Hara Davis, Tyro McKenna, <laughs> who wins? Uh, I have to say a horror, man. Obviously, I've been in the ring with him, and I know McKenna can fight. I saw he went, he went, he went all the rounds when he when he got dropped early in his fight with um with the Southpaw um from Manchester. Yeah, he got dropped twice, and he went all the rounds. So I'm sure it'll be a good fight. He's tall as well, but I just feel like I just feel horrors. I feel horror should do it. We'll see, but I feel if if I, I will vote if I was to bet, I will bet on the horror. Well, Jeff, my friend, nice <laughs> yeah, to see thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Um, bless you, my child. Um, listen, I can't wait to get out. And see, <laughs> I, I was gutted actually. I missed that fight, <laughs> yeah, but there'll well, be more on the horizon. Definitely. Um, stay safe and thank you, you too. So much for giving me your time. Right, thank you, Jackie. Stay blessed, Shadow Boxer. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowbox UK, we'd love to see you, so please go ahead and subscribe now.